In this video, we're talking about headlights, specifically LED conversions with this direct fit unit for an H4 style bucket. And if it's something you guys are interested in, you guys are gonna like this video. I have a lot of information ahead, so stick around. Now our subject today is going to be this 85 Yamaha Virago 700 and it uses a standard H4 bulb. So what I want to do is provide some back-to-back -back kind of comparisons both with the light output against the wall. Along with the visual comparison we're also going to actually measure the amp draw and configure the wattage for both bulbs to see the difference there. So let's start with the Virago bulb. This is a standard H4. We'll look at the, the wall behind me and kind of see how it compares. Alright, so we are going to do this test now in both light and dark in the shop. So first I'm going to fire the light up on the bike. This is a standard H4. That's low beam. And it looks like the high beam is actually not... Oh, there it is. There's the high beam. Low beam, high beam. I'm going to kill the lights in the shop. So again, there's low beam and high beam. Now let's go ahead and get the old bulb out and we can measure it on the bench against the new one. Now in this particular light, we actually unclock this outer ring. Some might have a different style retainer in them, but you know that'll be different for whatever you're using. So this one is a Philips H4, and this is a 60-55 watt. So it says it right there. So we can measure this thing. We can measure the amp draw, and this thing should measure out to about... 60 or 55 watts between low beam and high beam. All right, now let's go ahead and open up this light, talk about what we got here. Of course, this will be available on my website. You can find it there, unless you're coming from a website and you found this. Now the idea here is that this is a direct fit bulb, okay? This is also going to create a necessary amount of heat to actually help the seal within the headlight bucket itself, which a lot of times you don't get with a different LED. And this, again, it's, it's, this is direct fit and specifically designed for motorcycles with that purpose in mind. You can see here you have the alignment tangs on the side, high low beam, the plug is the same as it should be, obviously. And this looks like a little heat sink or just a, a way of creating the heat. Now comparing it, you can see we have no real difference. There is a small size increase on this, but that is a lot better than having an external module and stuff that you got to fit inside the bucket or hide on the bike. This is just a much simpler, more elegant solution. All right, so next up, I want to go ahead and measure the amperage of both of these bulbs to compare to. So. Basically, we're doing this because we need to know our wattage. Our wattage is important because that is our power consumption. So this may be uh, of concern to you, it may not be. It depends on the situation you're in. Now, almost every bike is different. They're all going to have a different wattage output, and that comes from your charging system, like your stator, your rotor. That system is going to output a certain amount of, uh, of electrical power, and that's measured in wattage. And of course, the more wattage that you can produce from that system, the more things you can power on the bike. Now, let's say you have an old like CB350 twin Honda. You might notice that at idle or low RPMs, that headlight's pretty dim and kind of flickers. Well, that's because it has like a traditional, say 55 watt headlight bulb, and it's only outputting so much electrical power. 
So a lot of that power is being consumed by like your tail light, of course the headlight, and then the ignition system. So as soon as you give it a little bit of gas and increases RPMs, you're therefore creating more charge or more electrical output. And you'll notice that headlight brightens up a little bit. So that's why you see that. So another way this could be important to you by going with a lesser wattage bulb is like, let's say you have an adventure bike like me and you wanna run maybe some aftermarket accessories like heated grips, you know, a heated vest, things like that, a different navigation. You need more power output to run those things. So if you can swap in a different headlight bulb, save on that power consumption, that means you have extra to go towards those other accessories. So just gotta think about that. Now to test this system, what I have here is just a regular battery and then I have a digital multimeter and then one alligator clip. It's pretty easy, but you do need to pay attention here. So uh, off the bike, I went ahead and I marked the terminals on the bulb itself, high, low, ground, so you know what pins you're sticking this to. And I will show you guys exactly how to do it right now. Okay, now to start this test, I have an alligator clip from the ground side of the battery. This is going to go on the ground side of the headlight bulb. So that clip's there. And then my meter, in this instance, because we're measuring current, we have the DC-10 comm jack. The red is on the DC-10 here. And then we're also going to use the DC-10 setting. Okay. Now, time to measure. So I'm going to do the low beam first. And what you want to do here, you have your red probe. Hook it on the bulb. Make sure it's not touching anything else. Then you'll take the black probe and put that on the actual battery. That's going to brighten up, move the light so you can read the meter. 3.19 amps. We're going to write that down. All right, now we're going to recreate the exact same test, except on the high beam side. So again, red probe there, black probe here, much brighter. 4.17 amps. Okay, now we're going to recreate the exact same test with the new LED. So same test here. Test the low beam. Make sure our meter is on our DC-10. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Ah, I'm blind. Okay, if you guys aren't blind, I'm reading the meter at 1.88 amps. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Alright, I just wrote that down. So I'm going to switch the leads. Measure high beam. We're going to close our eyes. Hope for the best here. Okay, yep. 1.848380, just kind of dropping steadily. Just going to do that test one more time. One seven 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 six. Yeah, not sure what to really put it at on that one but 1.75 or so. So interesting thing here, I just went back to the uh, low beam side. I'm running this and it's also dropping down below 1.787473. So I think as it gets warmed up, it's actually being more efficient. I can feel it going in my hand here. So I'd mentioned that heat and I can, I can actually feel it starting to create some right here. That's pretty cool. All right, now I hope you guys can read this paper because I can barely see it right now with the spots in my eyes from how bright that LED was. But we have our stock H4, low beam, 3.19 amps, high beam, 4.17. The new LED, because we saw that reading, the initial hit on the low beam was 1.88. And then as I went, it kept dropping. And by the time I measured the high beam, it was 1.75. 
I'd also went back to the low beam and it was also in that range. So I'm going to average it and just do 1.8 for this, for this reason. And now we're going to go ahead and figure up our wattage. So our power consumption. So for this, we have a triangle. So up top we have watts. Down here we have volts and amps. So watts equals volts times amps. If you want to figure amps, watts divided by volts. If you want to figure volts, you got watts divided by amps. See how that works? Pretty neat little trick. So for this instance, we have 3.19 amps. We're going to do that times 12.5. We're going to use that as our base number. So 12.5 times 3.19 what that's telling us is, I didn't leave myself anywhere to, anywhere to write. So that is 39.875 watts. Okay. Now we do same thing. 12.5 times 4.17. And that is 52.125 watts. So a little bit of power consumption. So you see where this is going. We're going to go 12.5 times 1.8. And then for this one, our total consumption is at 22.5 watts. So right there you can see our power savings, which means we could use that energy somewhere else or we're just being that much more efficient. So you can see here on the uh, low beam, basically we're saving a full 18 watts. And if we just do, uh, let's say, 52 minus 22, on high beam we're saving 30 watts of power. So that's almost a full light bulb there. Pretty cool. All right, enough of the science talk. Let's go ahead and install. Oh, there, I still can't see. Let's go ahead and install this thing. All right, so as I went to install the bulb the first time, it actually would not quite fit down far enough into the hole. So I did open up this hole about a half a millimeter. And that's basically to clear this lower fin here, the lowest of the fins. So I chose to modify the bucket. And then our stock headlight ring here, our retainer ring, works as factory. These tabs on the new headlight are, are on the new bulb are a little thicker, so this is a little harder to twist on. There you have it. Well, let's check this new light out. Key on. A little bit more of a white light. You can see on the wall here. Much brighter. So let me kind of do some side by side comparison here. shut off the lights and we'll mimic the same test we did earlier. All right, new LED headlight. We have low beam, high beam, low beam, high beam, low, high. I'm going to shut off the lights. Ooh, this, I can tell you right now it's brighter in here. So again, there's low beam and high beam.
what's going to be hard to capture is the light around the shop. I feel like it's much more lit in here. This is on low beam. I have my eye closed because I can't even look into this. Well, it wasn't too bad. We have the LED bulb installed in the H4 housing, so a nice clean swap. It did take a little bit of uh, a little bit of finesse to kind of open up the hole to get that thing in there, but overall not bad. And this headlight ring, I actually have not seen one like that, so I don't know if this uh, this bucket is slightly different, but I'm definitely going to test this out on other bikes, and when I do, you guys will see that. I hope you guys found this one informative as well. I tried to pack in a little bit more information as far as testing. You know, I was testing the amp draw. We got to see the actual differences in the two bulbs and the setups. So overall, we have that nice power savings because we have less wattage required to run the light, which means we have extra wattage for extra accessories throughout the bike. And just overall, just more power savings, more efficiency. So, and then the bonus on top of that is that it's brighter, it's safer, you know, it's, it's easier to see uh, ahead of you and it's easier for cars to see you. And eventually my eyes will recover because I did definitely blind myself the first time I fired that thing up. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, leave them below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And hopefully soon enough, I'll have this thing on my website. You can purchase it and that would be awesome. There's a lot more to come on that front. There's a lot of exciting stuff ahead. So stay tuned. That's all I can really say right now. But anyway, if you guys haven't already, give me a follow on social media. It's just Brick House Builds across the board. Check out my website. Check out all that stuff. And subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. So until next time, I'm going to sign off here. Hope you guys like this one. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.